Hi, welcome to the Silver Spleen. My name is Jean-Paul Van Dammit, and this is my review of Future X Cops. In Wong Jing's Future X Cops, Andy Lau plays Kid Zhao, a police officer whose wife, Millie, played by Fan Bingbing, is also a cop. They have a daughter named KK, played by Zhu Zhao. Kid and Millie must protect Dr. Masterson, played by Ma Jing Wu. Dr. Masterson is a scientist, and it would seem he was adopted. They must protect him from a group of cyborgs, led by Callan, played by Fan Su Wong. The cyborgs want to kill Dr. Masterson, but they are foiled by Kid, who not only loses his wife in the battle, but destroys the entire museum exhibit, saving Dr. Masterson. I have only one question about Ian Powers' character. How does he go to the bathroom all this shit on? The bad guys then steal a time travel device that we never see, but we're told about. It apparently allows you to travel back in time using something called the Universe Crevice, which at least partially explains why they call it the Crack of Dawn. The bad guys want to travel back in time and kill Dr. Masterson. Kid Zhao goes back in time to protect Dr. Masterson. His daughter accompanies him to the past because the police department wasn't going to pay for 60 years of babysitting. Future X Cops takes place in a city in two futures, 2020 and 2080. There are things that are familiar about this city and things that aren't. It's obvious that the city is Chinese in some ways because the writing on the signs is in Chinese and 99% of the people are Chinese. But I'm not really sure that you could say it was China. First of all, they never say it's China. They say it's a city. In 2080, the people speak Cantonese and the sky is blue. Maybe it's Malaysia or it's science fiction. I mean, feather pillows in 2080? Considering the movie starts in 2080 and then goes back to 2020, well, that's time travel, so it's probably not China. The police drive BMWs and use Apple computers, so it might be China, but not 2020. This is getting confusing. At one point, a police officer grabs a bag of stuff out of his car. It's a stolen Ikea bag. Chinese police do not steal. Must not be China. Hmm. Andy Lau finds it strange that the ancient people of 2020 apologize. Maybe it is China. But then a few minutes later, Andy Lau's character tells someone that if they have new ideas, they must speak out about them. Nope, not China. The best approach to watching this movie is to not allow yourself to ask too many questions and never ask why. If you do, you'll very quickly find yourself trapped in the universe crevice or some other uncomfortable place. But that's not to say that the movie isn't entertaining, it certainly is. It's not the greatest movie ever made, but I enjoyed it in the cinema and I enjoyed it on DVD for a lot of reasons. Maybe I have low standards or maybe it's just a fun movie, who knows? Say what you want about Wong Jing, he knows what his audience likes. He's also the only director in cinematic history to cut a child character in half but make it so that it's okay. To find out why, watch this video to the end. I can recommend this movie as long as you understand that it's entertaining and it's not edifying or enlightening or any of that. It's good for quite a few laughs, and that's really where the beauty of it is, at least for me. But hey, what do I know about movies? If you wanna watch this movie, do it the right way. Rent it online, buy a disc. Don't illegally download it, don't illegally watch it online. Why? Cause that's not how it works. In the description, there's a link where you could buy this movie. I don't think Blu-ray is necessary. If you enjoyed this review, please leave me a comment. If you didn't enjoy the review, ah, leave me a comment anyway. If you enjoy the channel, please subscribe because that way you'll get to see all the new videos as soon as I release them, if that's important to you. Thank you for watching. Spoiler alert! My favorite part of this movie, or at least the most memorable, is when Kid's daughter KK is being held captive by Callan. Callan demands that Kid give up his energy stick, rendering him powerless in exchange for KK's life. Kid does it, but Callan's girlfriend Fiona kills the little girl anyway. Or does she? It turns out that KK is a robot that Kid built so that he wouldn't feel lonely because his real daughter died. 
After a brief moment that features Andy Lau's greatest on-screen age disparity yet, he absorbs the upper half of the robot and regains his power. I guess it's just lucky for him that Callan didn't throw KK out the fucking window. I personally thought it would have been funnier if when Callan holds KK and says, give me your energy stick or I'll kill her, that Andy Lau had replied more like Danny DeVito in Ruthless People. I dare you to kill her! Once again, thank you for watching.